Hey guys, Jake here. Very excited today because I finally got the K1 stereo from Carol Bar Boulder in the mail after a long wait. And uh, we're gonna see if I like it and throw it in the Jeep. And here it is. This is how it came in the mail. Um, I don't really like that it it didn't come in an enclosed box so everyone could see that it's a, clearly a car stereo, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the camera and I'm gonna start opening it um, just so I can figure out how to open it and I'll show you guys what's in it. All right, so I got all the flimsy plastic wrap that it came in and I think I figured out how it opens. Uh, to show there's no secrets here. Uh, Very professional, I think so far. Right. I'm putting the camera down again. All right, everything that was in this box is here, still unopened. First thing I noticed is on the top they had balancing is a wiring diagram, and on the back is their instructions. I'm hoping that there's more instructions in there uh, because these ones are they're half ass. <laughs> so. Uh, but we'll see. I'm guessing this is the radio. This is the radio itself. Um, pull this out. Very light. Holy cow. This thing is shallow. Alright. Here's the radio itself. The plastic actually feels very OEM. It doesn't feel chintzy or cheap at all. Uh, buttons are okay, I guess. Um, they have okay clicks. A little wiggle room, but nothing major. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. Um, one thing I can say off right off the top without even having installed it that I can see that is likely going to drive me nuts. <laughs> volume buttons on the right. Sorry about that, drop the camera. But yeah, these volume buttons on the right, I don't know. Maybe it won't be the end of the world. Um, as long as everything works well with the uh, steering wheel controls, which I believe it will, um, it should turn out okay. I'm going to this box, uh, second one that came with. And it looks like this is the rest of the trim. Okay. Yep. So here we have the wiring harness. Um, it has a little dial on it. Oh, this is the GPS. You can see it has a GPS sensor on it. Um, micro SD for downloading maybe images. I don't know. Don't quote me. Likely just sound. Uh, USB A. I believe this is the one that is going to be for Apple CarPlay as well as wired Android Auto. Not sure if it's wireless, this website didn't say. Some say it does, some say it doesn't. Um, maybe this is the GPS. I don't know, we got two strips here. I guess we're gonna find out. Uh, they both have the same ports, so. Uh, the Batman backup camera here. Uh, let's see how this is gonna wire. I, I don't know if it'll go into my backup camera that I already have set up. If it does, I'm gonna be very happy. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be complicated, uh, so we're we're going to see <sighs> more wires. This is the actual wire harness. I heard the black one isn't needed. I'm not 100% sure. Again, we're going to find out. Uh, this looks like the actual wire for the backup camera. Okay, looks like I'm probably going to have to redo my backup camera system. Um, unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, I guess we'll figure that out together as well. This, I believe, is the plate that will sit on the top. I know some of the complaints of the uh, pre-release of the K1 is there's a seam that's going to be visible. I don't think that will bother me too much. I think cutting my dash is going to be the worst thing I have to do with this. Um, on top of wiring, I hate wiring. I think, I don't know anyone who genuinely enjoys wiring stuff. So yeah, all right. 
We'll take all this outside and we're gonna throw it in the Wrangler. Okay, so finally I have the carburetor K1 installed on the JK. Uh, it seems to fit pretty well. Um, like I said, I, I didn't go through the whole install. However, I'd like to show some of the features. Um, after I installed it, I took some time to play with it. Uh, approximately uh, five to seven days to kind of get used to it a little bit uh, on and off. And these are some of the key things that I noticed. So just on install, um, <clears throat> you do have to cut your dash, as it says online now. Um, you cut it down the middle on the OEM trim panel that would be attached to your vent and uh, radio unit itself. When you make the cut, um, if you do mess up, they extended out the tab uh, quite a bit, so it should, in theory, help um, cover it up. It does, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. Obviously, on the passenger side, it is not there. Uh, but then again, on the driver's side, it is. The only thing I don't like is the split um, on the top where it connects the radio to the tray. Not the end of the world, but it is what it is. Uh, overall, I think the hardware looks fantastic. So, uh, like I said, it's it's all plug and play. Um, the manual is very good. Uh, I shouldn't say very good. It It's, here, I have it right here. If you want, you can pause the video. If you can, hopefully the camera's not shaking too much. Um, but this is the install manual that it comes with. And then also how to run the camera and where to cut the dash. So we'll go into some of the software. I had, like I said, I had some time to play with it. Um, I actually reached out to Cara Boulder with all of my issues that I did have. So I'll address it in the video to hopefully uh, save anyone, you know, time with having to reach out to him. So first I'll show you the boot up time. It takes a minute to boot up. It doesn't take uh, super long every single time. However, it, like I said, it can take probably about 20 to 25 seconds. Uh, just depends when you last had your vehicle running. Um, so I'll just leave you to it. It says Jeep. You can change the boot logo. I'll show how to do that. That was one of the issues that I did have. I figured it out. Um, I'll go from there. So when you first start it up, first thing you'll see is obviously the the home page. Uh, the screen looks 10 times better than it does in the video. I'm looking at my GoPro camera right now and it does not do it justice. The screen is comparable to the iPhone. I have an iPhone 13 and the glass feels great. The touch feels great. The screen is crystal clear. Um, I'll quickly go through everything as fast as I can. On the bottom left, you have your radio. Um, you can set whatever presets you like. You just hold it down after you scan for it. Um, in the radio, you can set your EQ, your delay, balance, everything. The equalizer looks like it has 30 different presets. This is just on the pop preset. But as you can see, there's, there's 10 different um, uh, bands that you can change. Oh, it's connecting to wireless Apple CarPlay right now. Here, well, we're not going to connect right now. Um, it does that automatically. Kind of cool. We'll go back into here. Uh, so when you're in the EQ, you have 30 different bands to play with. So you have three pages. Each page has 10. Uh, at the top left, you have a home button. You have a back button. And you also have a screen layering button as well as a uh, turn off display. And you just barely touch and it comes back on. It runs on Android. So you can pull it down and it pulls up basic Android um, software type of, type of OS. Uh, here's, we'll go back to the home. You can download music. I'll touch it for you. It's going to turn off the radio. Um, you have to download music onto the device itself. I didn't download any music, so it is what it is. Bluetooth, um, pretty self-explanatory. You have your connections, you can, uh, my Bluetooth isn't even connected right now because I'm on wireless Apple CarPlay. So if I wasn't on wireless CarPlay, you'd access all your Bluetooth just from the Bluetooth button. Um, then you have your apps. I'll go to apps in a second uh, because there's a lot of them. 
you have your video where you can download videos. You have navigation where it uses Google Maps. I'll just show you that it uses Google Maps. I'm not going to go through the whole load system. Uh, then you have your system setup, which is just setup. It's like a settings log. On the base of the screen, you have screen off, touch it, or you can just hit the button twice. Home button brings you back home. The middle button is for the car boater. Um, if you were to, let's say, have uh, the J Pro, I don't have the J Pro, um, unfortunately. However, you could flick over the sand, climb, snow, mud mode, and road mode, uh, and it would display on your J Pro. I don't have that. I heard in the future that it will be able to possibly play uh, or display your music on the J, J Pro as well as your maps that you do bring up. Here's uh, your mute button. We're going to go home. Uh, your mute button, volume on and off, and then this is another button for navigation. Uh, it is what it is. I I wish there wasn't two of them. I think there's a way to change your home buttons. Not 100% sure yet. I guess I only had a few days to play with it. I'm still learning. And then on the right, you have your volume control. If you're a left-hand driver, uh, like mostly every car is in America, kind of a pain in the butt to have the volume on the passenger side. However, all steering wheel controls work fine. Uh, it actually works a lot better than the standard Uconnect system as you have uh, Apple CarPlay now. So we'll go into the apps. In the apps, the this is kind of unique. It doesn't look too Android. It's pretty much everything that's on the bottom as well as in your control panel with the exception of the, your AV lines as well as a phone link. Phone link will bring you to wired CarPlay. Uh, I have my wire running from the middle of the dash. I'm going to try to show you guys wireless um, just because everyone knows wired CarPlay works. As soon as you plug it in, it pulls up wired CarPlay without an issue. Uh, when you scroll over, this is where it turns into a very Android-like setup. Um, so you can download all apps from the Google Play Store and put them on your head unit. This thing acts like a tablet. I can search Google Chrome. I can uh, play videos on YouTube. I can pull up my Google Photos and actually set my background. I'll show you that really quick. You can change the background on the head unit by just holding it, and you can download them from Google Photos, and it pulls them over in very good quality. Um, and then you have your normal wallpapers that you can uh, check through that are provided by uh, Caraboder themselves. Um, so we'll go back into the apps. Again, this is a second page. You can pull up your settings, which is just down here. It's the setup. And then these are uh, some of the apps that I've downloaded so far. So here's Autolink. Autolink is wireless CarPlay. Again, here's here's my plug. Here's my my phone. There's no wire in it at all. None. So it's completely wireless. Uh, everything runs fine. The wireless is a little bit laggy. Not terrible, um, but there's a slight lag there. Uh, nothing to complain about when you plug it in. It's lightning fast uh, you can access all of your music everything just as you normally would with apple carplay um, no complaints i'm so happy that it has apple carplay especially running on an android operating system uh, that is phenomenal a plus i haven't seen too many head units uh, aftermarket for that matter that run wireless apple carplay uh, nevertheless one that's you know at this price point just over six hundred dollars um I've tried the Alpines and everything, and this works just as well, uh, again, for cheaper. And I think this looks 10 times better. Nothing against Alpine. I do love Alpine products, again, uh, especially with uh, their CarPlay features. I also enjoy the Kenwoods, but this just looks so e OEM and like it belongs in the Wrangler. All right. I uh, ran into some uh, issues. My GoPro batteries died, so I had to swap those out. Uh, but anyways, we will continue. Um, I just showed you that the wireless Apple CarPlay does in fact work. Uh, work. When I did post this uh, to my Instagram page, I started to receive some questions on how to set up the wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, I messaged Cara Boulder. They sent me a video on how to do it. I can't save it to put it with this video, so I'll try to explain it as best I can. Um, so what you want to do is when you're on your home screen, you're going to go to the setup icon on the bottom right or however you want to access it. There's 10 different ways on how to access that page from this head unit. Um, you go to setup and from setup, you're going to want to go to car infotainment. In car infotainment, um, you're going to want to go to about device, which is all the way at the bottom of uh, the display. 
once you're in there, you're going to hit this settings icon. It should prompt this pop-up. The code for this prompt or pop-up is the same for every head unit. It's 8878 and press OK. Once you are in this screen, you want to go down to others. Once in others, you will scroll all the way down to the well, close to the bottom and you will go to auto link. It's normally disabled. You want to hit enable. Once enabled, uh, you're going to want to go, well, the whole system will have to reboot because it's going to download what looks like a factory app icon. Um, and once you are fully rebooted, it only takes, it, it takes maybe 15 seconds, a lot less time than if you're just turning on the head unit. Um, it'll bring you to the homepage <laughs> after the reboot. From there, you want to go into apps and from apps, you will scroll over to the third page where you'll see auto link. Uh, before you click on auto link, you want to make sure that your Bluetooth is on and paired with the head unit. From there, you would click on uh, auto link and it will bring you to the wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, kind of cool. It's nice getting in the vehicle and it automatically pops up. Um, I don't mind plugging it in to have wired, but the wireless CarPlay is a huge A plus feature for this head unit. Um, just to go over a uh, few more things that I've uh, found on this device that are rather cool. Obviously this, the backlighting, uh, the accent light is awesome. It matches fairly well with the uh, dash um, uh, on the JK as it is. Turn it on and off, it it auto adjusts. Um, I'm sh I just have it on for video's sake right now. Uh, the other cool feature, that this device has is if let's say your navigation um, and you want to mess with I don't know Bluetooth and you had Bluetooth running in the background you could hit the uh, screen um, duplicate or the tab link I should say and you just click on your maps or whatever it is that you have and you throw it over to the side this app does not support split screen so not needed any of these um, Let's say on this side I had Bluetooth running, this side I needed maps. I could be accessing both at the same time. If I didn't want to mess with Bluetooth anymore, I could just click the drag bar and have a full screen map. That's really cool. It's awesome that it can multitask. Like I said, very similar to having a, um, a tablet in your vehicle. Now for uh, the only issue I've had with this head unit at all, which is more so, it's not even the head unit's issue it's just uh, something that Carl Boulder has so when you buy a he your head unit you have the option to buy the Batman camera the Batman camera is the only camera I have found that works with the head unit um, and the wiring that uh, is provided I had a few extra not extra but I had a few backup cameras that I had used in the past uh, aftermarket and the plugs look almost identical however nothing comes up on the display so I'll show you what my issue is when I put the vehicle in reverse Yes, it has the backup lines. Very cool. The display is 720p. It's phenomenal. I can see everything behind me in my garage. When I turn the steering wheel, uh, I don't know if it'll show on the camera. I, my vehicle's not on, but the lines actually move with your steering wheel. The problem is there's a motorcycle behind me right now, and you can barely see it. It looks like I'm literally parked on top of the motorcycle, and there's about six inches left uh, for me to back up before I would hit it. Um, the camera itself mounts to the roof of your JK on the hardtop with 3M tape. Uh, I don't like that because, as you can see, you can't see everything exactly behind you. However, my cousin uh, does metal fab and he's mounting me a bracket to mount inside my wheel well, uh, which is perfect. Um, we did some uh, tests with a kind of a prototype and it looks like it's going to work flawlessly. We're just... Uh, figuring out how we're going to mount it appropriately without scratching my wheels. Um, so once that's done, maybe I'll show you a video of the bracket that I made if anyone wants, or he made for me, if anyone would like to copy it. I'm not skilled in metal fab, uh, so I can't show you. I know earlier in the video, I mentioned uh, on the unboxing that the video or that the uh, buttons were a little different. Now that it's installed, they're not really that loose. The only thing I noticed is the home button has a little noise. You can't even hear it. I'm sure it didn't even pick up on the camera. Uh, once you're driving, you don't hear it. Um, it's not even a squeak. It's just, it's the only clicky button that I have. It's probably because I touch it the most. 
Um, but that's about it. If you have any questions on how to set up anything on here, um, whether it's the wireless Apple CarPlay um, or anything like that, I know even for the boot logo, you still have to go into car infotainment and hit about device, go to the settings icon, 8878, hit OK. And if you want to change your boot logo, this is the, or the place to do it as well. Uh, I think I showed you earlier, mine says Jeep. You can change it to anything. I mean, there's tons of different displays. They're mostly just car emblems. You might be able to upload your own. I haven't messed with it too much because I really don't, I don't care too much uh, about that. For the wireless Apple CarPlay, uh, when you do get your head unit, make sure you message Car Aboter and ask them for the code for the wireless Apple CarPlay because you will have a unique code to type in once you open up uh, car link for the first time, so if, or auto link. The first time you open auto link, it's going to ask you for a code. Um, once you type in that code, it will remember your device every single time you come in your Jeep. And uh, right away, it will uh, bring up Apple CarPlay. And that's all I have for you. If you guys have any questions on anything, uh, feel free to reach out whether it's in the comment section or if you have any questions uh, or if I'm not getting back to you in the comment section, message me on my uh, Instagram. I reply to pretty much everyone. I've walked a few people through so far on how to set up the wireless CarPlay and it's worked out for everyone. Uh, that's all. Hope you enjoy enjoyed the video. Um, and that was the Car Boulder K1 head unit.